today's video, we're going to discuss the vendor HUD and the chest HUD. I, I feel like it, it makes sense to combine these two into one video, uh, mainly because they're not all that different from the inventory HUD. And so hopefully you've had a chance to review that video first. If you haven't, I would recommend doing that because not only does it explain a lot of what I'm going to cover today, but also it, um, I'm not going to go through quite as much explanation in terms, and I'm not going to set up an elaborate looking uh, HUD. I think we're just going to use the out of the box HUDs for this. Um, you know, so if you want more detail, start there and then come to this video instead. Uh, but let's just take a look at this. So here, this is uh, the scene that came with uh, one of the uh, wasteland packs that I have. I don't, I'm not sure exactly which. So I thought, you know what, this works fine. It's kind of a camping scene. And, you know, I've stopped at a roadside garage to pick up some supplies. And so here we'll talk to, to Earl, the shopkeeper. Uh, I'm going to press E to, to trade. Well, hi there. Welcome. If you see anything you like, let me know. Also, help yourself some water out front in the cooler. It's free. All right? So, he's got a voiceover, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and here we see we see some shop items that are available for purchase. If I click on one of those items, then we get the name of the item that's for sale, the amount that uh, it's worth, and the picture of the item. Um, I can buy that if I have enough gold. So, I'm just going to go ahead and buy. And that comes out of the inventory here. Uh, let's see. We'll also get maybe some bug spray. There we go. So a couple items there. Uh, we've got a button to leave the um, the vendor. And the, the man offered us some free water. So let's not uh, be rude. Let's take some free water. So we have a cooler out here. And if we click uh, E, we open that up. And here's the water in the chest. So we're just going to take all the water. There's only one bottle left. We'll just take that. Okay. So let's talk about how that's done because it's more than just the HUDs. So let's start with the items that uh, are for sale or the items that are really in the, in the, the two containers. Now those items need to be in the scene somewhere. They don't need to be visible necessarily. You could hide them somewhere or stick them in a box or, or whatever, but they do need to be present in the level. If they're not present in the level, then you can't, uh, you can't add a behavior to them and then you can't, they can't show up in the containers. So here I've stashed a bunch of items so you can see the water bottle. Um, and that's been set up as a collect object. We, you know, we talked about that a little bit in the, uh, inventory. Uh, pretty basic uh, controls here. The important piece is the uh, con the collectible settings, right? So we've named what it is. Uh, we've put some item cost in there. Honestly, that doesn't really make a difference because we're not selling the water. Um, more importantly, we've identified what container it belongs to. And if we cursor over this, it says enter a container for the item that determines where the item will start in the game. So if I didn't do that, if I said none, then it might be just something I pick up. It doesn't start inside of a container, it's just outside in the world somewhere that I'm able to, to pick up. But if I wanted to show up and spawn inside of a container, I got to tell it which container I want. Okay. Um, so these other items are pretty much set up the same way. They're all, they've all got the same behavior, collectible object. Um, in this case, I'm referencing Earl. That's just the name of the container. Um, so let's look at these containers next. So we'll start with the cooler. Now, I mean, the, cool, the cooler is a static object when I put it into the scene. I turn it into a dynamic object, and then I'm able to add a behavior to it, which is called chest. Um, and this, again, very basic setup. It doesn't take much. Um, it's referencing, well, which HUD should I open when I interact with this object? And this is just the name, the default name of HUD screen six. I could have named this anything. Um, and then the chest container, um, I kind of want to show you something. Let me, let's take this crate, for example. If we change this into a dynamic object and we add the chest behavior to this, 
go. Notice that chest unique is there. So what does that mean? Basically, what that means is if I don't override that, if I don't say it's, you know, give it a name at all and I just leave it as chest unique, that means that that, that chest is unique to any other chest. It, it basically generates a, a unique container in the, in the background that stores objects independent of anything else. So it truly is a, a, ch a unique chest. So let's say we wanted to make this sign a chest too, All right? We can do that. We can add the chest behavior here. There we go. And that's chest unique. That means that this, this unique chest is different than that one. So if I put an object in here, it's not gonna show up in there and vice versa. They're separate containers. Um, so I was, I was curious about that when I first started playing with these behaviors. And I thought to myself, I, I, I thought I had to name every container and keep track of what was in every container. Turns out not at all uh, necessary. And really um, the, the benefit of something like naming the chest is let's suppose we wanted a chest that had a set of contents that was pers persistent. And every time uh, we go and open a chest of that kind, it has the same contents no matter where we are in the game. You might uh, think about like a bank box or a personal chest um, that is persistent in terms of the contents, regardless of where they are in the game or in the level. Um, that's when you would want to name the cool, uh, like the, the chest itself, uh, so that it's a specific chest. Otherwise, it'll just generate kind of a random, like a, a basic chest, a concept of a chest in the background. I hope that makes sense. Um, it was it was a revelation to me. It made a lot of sense once I uh, once I started playing around with it. Okay, so there's another kind of container, um, and that's Earl here, right? So I think I don't remember what it says um, the shop container initially, uh, but I named him Earl. Does it doesn't matter what you call it? It, it really it could be anything. Um, and he has he's basically a container as well. So the uh, all the items that are behind the shed that have uh, the container Earl labeled, he's, it's gonna show up in his container in his inventory, so to speak. Um, the only other thing that's kind of cool about this um, behavior, this trader behavior, is you can record a, a, uh, like a, a voiceover. So you heard my lame attempt at voice acting. <laughs> don't, don't judge me too harshly. I, as you can see, it took me six. <laughs> That's how bad I am at this. It took me uh, six tries to get that even remotely close to right. You can get any file you want to, can, to be played there. No file at all if you if you don't want any kind of recording. Or you can record your your own uh, voiceover and play it back. It's up to you. But I thought that was a really neat uh, addition to the um, to the vendor. And you see that when I open the vendor. It played the recording, and I don't know if you noticed, play it back if you didn't, but his mouth is moving, so it actually does lip sync as well, so I thought that was pretty neat. So really, maybe when you uh, design your vendor HUD, maybe you don't have a box sitting in the middle of the HUD uh, hiding the, the face, because then you can't see the lip sync. Uh, so let's go take a look at that. So we're talking about HUD screens 5 and 6. And again, I didn't bother making anything fancy. I think the, the defaults are fine for demonstration purposes. And just like we talked about in the inventory HUD, first of all, you need an inventory HUD, right? Because if you're going to buy something, it's got to go somewhere. It's got to come out of the shop's inventory and into your own. And then uh, if you're going to take something out of a chest, again, it's got to go somewhere. So you need an inventory HUD to begin with. It's kind of why I started with that one. And much of what you see here is going to be basically the same stuff. You've got a background image here. You've got in a uh, global defined uh, panel here, which is linked to the, the inventory player. So just that inventory uh, panel that we saw in the other video, that's the one. It's the same thing. It's the same inventory. So if I was already holding items and I opened the vendor, those items would be persistent in my inventory and I could sell those items if they, if they were tradable. Okay. Um, so we have here um, some a global defined text, um, and I think that is yeah, it's just uh, going to display my shop name. So whatever the shop is named, that's what's going to display there. 
I don't think it, you have to have something like that. It's just, he, you know, they're showing you some options, what you can do with this. Um, this is the selected image. So whatever it is I clicked on, that's what's going to be displayed here. Uh, probably selected text there, selected title. Um, the selected cost. So anything, that, whatever I'm selected on, that's the the value that's going to be uh, displayed in those locations. So again, all of this is very much like the inventory screen. A lot of the same elements, and, and I don't want to go through a whole lot of detail that I've already covered in the previous video. Um, let's go look at the chest. So that would be a HUD 6, I think. Yep. So again, your inventory, same inventory, it's persistent. The selected item, the selected title, right? Um, you have a button here uh, that's called take all. So just like uh, we talked about buy and sell and leave, um, the, the words take all is, a, is essentially a keyword. So if you want you know, the ability to retrieve all of the items in the chest, you need to use the word take all or both words take all it doesn't have to be capitalized if you don't want it to be but it does need to be those letters um, and again you want to leave button here because that's um, going to allow you to exit the screen okay um, and that's that's basically it that's uh, the vendor hud and the chest hud in a nutshell it's very much like the inventory it wasn't hard to put together. I think the, the key uh, takeaways from this is make sure that you, the items that you want to be in the containers, whether it's the vendor or a chest, are um, somewhere in the level, even if you hide them or sneak them away somewhere, they need to be present so it has reference to what that is um, and set the, the uh, behavior up accordingly. Uh, if you want it to spawn in a chest or not in a chest or spawn in a particular vendor. All right. So that's it for this video. I hope that made sense and it was clear. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'm going to be doing some more videos here soon. I'll, I will cover all of the different uh, HUD screens at some point. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to click the like button. Uh, if you are new here and you haven't already subscribed, we'd love to have you. Please click the subscribe button that helps grow the channel. And if you would like a notification whenever I uh, release a new video, I, I always mention that I don't keep a regular schedule. It's really just when I have something to show, then I, I try to get one done. So uh, be sure to click the bell icon that's going to notify you whenever I post a new video. Uh, thanks so much for watching all the way through and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.